Suppose an athlete is running the 200 meters and we want to model his distance using the equation s equals k root t, where s is his distance from the starting position, k is a constant, and t is the time in seconds since he set off. So a couple things to begin with. The first is that the runner is traveling with a linear motion, and so we can model this problem in one dimension. And the second thing is that because we have no indication that acceleration should be constant, in order to find his speed or acceleration at any given time, we're going to need to use calculus. So here's a really useful diagram that might help you with the calculus of variable acceleration problems. So we have distance, we have speed, and we have acceleration. And going from left to right, we have to differentiate. So if we've been given distance as a function of time, then if we differentiate that function, then we get uh, the formula for the speed. And if we've been given the speed as a function of time, then if we differentiate again, then we get the acceleration. And then going from right to left, we have to integrate. So if we've been given the acceleration as a function of time, then by integrating, we get the speed. And if we have the speed as a function of time, then integrating again give us the distance. So in our example, we have um, distance given as a function of time. Uh, let's say that the runner finishes the race in 25 seconds. So uh, he covers the 200 meters in 25 seconds. Uh, that's going to allow us to work out the value of k. So when his distance is 200 meters, then 200 equals k times the square root of 25 because he passes the 200 meter point after 25 seconds and then this is going to allow us to work out k. So 200 equals 5, the square root of 25, times k. Therefore k equals 200 over 5, so we get 40. So we now have s equals 40 root t. So let's use this model to estimate the speed of the runner as he passes the finish line. So from the diagram we know that in order to find the speed we can take the derivative of the distance which is what we've been given as a function of time. So if we take the derivative of the left, the derivative of the distance is the speed. And then on the right we're taking the derivative of 40 root t, which is equivalent to 40 t to the half. So using the power rule, the derivative of 40 t to the half is 40 times a half t to the minus a half. And when we simplify this, we get v equals 20 t to the minus a half. So if we want the speed um, when he passes the finish line, uh, well, we know he passes the finish line at t equals 25, so we can plug this into the equation v equals 20 times 25 to the minus a half. And 25 to the minus a half is the same thing as 1 over the square root of 25. So v equals 20 over 5 um, as he passes the finish line. So his speed is 4 meters per second as he crosses the finish line. Let's now try to estimate the acceleration of the runner 10 seconds after he begins the sprint. So from the diagram we know that acceleration is the derivative of the speed or the second derivative of the distance. So let's take the derivative of this one more time. a equals the derivative of 20t to the minus a half, so that's 20 and then using the power rule, we get minus a half t to the minus 3 over 2. So simplifying, uh, we're going to get 20 times minus a half is minus 10. So minus 10 t to the minus 3 over 2. And if we're looking for his acceleration 10 seconds after he starts the race, then we're going to plug in t equals 10. So a equals minus 10 times 10 to the minus 3 over 2, which should come out as minus 0 
to two sig fig. And so the minus sign here implies that 10 seconds into the race, he's decelerating at a rate of 0.32 meters per second squared. For our next variable acceleration problem, we have a car traveling with linear motion at a speed given by v equals 18 plus five sine t over two. And again, acceleration is not gonna be constant, and so we will be using calculus. So here is our car, and this is the equation to model the speed of the car um, at time t. But let's say that we're trying to find the distance that the car has traveled after t seconds. And in order to do that, we're gonna to need to integrate our formula for the speed. So distance is equal to the integral of 18 plus five sine t over two with respect to time. Um, so the integral of 18 is just 18t, and we know that the integral of sine is negative cosine, so the integral of sine t over two is gonna be negative cosine t over two divided by the inner derivative. So we're gonna get minus five cosine t over two divided by the derivative of t over two, so divided by a half, and then we have a constant at the end. So S is equal to 18t minus 10 cosine t over two plus a constant c. And in order to determine this constant, we're gonna to need to use the conditions that we have at the top. So plugging these in, zero is equal to 18 times zero minus 10 cosine zero plus c. Cosine zero is equal to one so zero is equal to minus 10 plus C, therefore C is equal to 10. So our equation for the distance that the car has traveled after T seconds is this, it's 18 T minus 10 cosine T over two plus 10. So let's say that we wanted to find how far the car had traveled after 30 seconds, we'd need to plug in T equals 30. So 18 times 30 minus 10 cosine 30 over two plus 10. And it's important to remember that for trigonometry in calculus, we always need to use radians. So this is cosine 15 in radians. And this should come out as 558 meters to three sig fig. Let's finish off by deriving the formula for the acceleration of the car at time t. So we have speed as a function of time so in order to find acceleration, we need to differentiate. So acceleration is equal to, well, the derivative of any constant is zero, and the derivative of five sine t over two is five cosine t over two times the inner derivative. So the derivative of t over two is a half. So the acceleration of the car is given by five over two cosine t over two. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you found the video useful. And if you have any comments or questions, post them down below and I'll see you next time.